The problem with direct provision isn't just that the system is a disaster, it's that 90% of applicants are not asylum seekers at all. Now the government's new plan for housing will make an already crippling housing crisis even worse and allow thousands of new arrivals to bring their families here with an inbuilt right to housing and more at the taxpayers expense. The government have announced that they are seeking to end direct provision by 2023 and replace it with a brand new system for handling asylum claims. I arrived here on the 25th of, of February 2007. I wasn't speaking any English at all. From the airport, I tried to seek protection, which became a big trouble for me because of, of, of lang language barriers. I got jailed, taken to prison that day, brought back the next morning to process my application um, by getting a translator through the phone, which unfortunately, Whatsoever the truth I was saying, everything was shaped in a different context. My country of origin was not accepted because an immigration officer sitting, dealing with uh, immigration issues, did not accept that I'm from the, the country I said. Even using a map to say, this is my country, said, we never seen anybody from that country here. We don't believe. Um, the vacuum, it, it, it made me feel crazy. I remember I started to cry. I'll think about the things that happened to me back home. And those things, they'll make me cry. I added the crying into my routine. So I'll take my son to the bus, come back, eat, start crying. Or sometimes I'll start digging of things that happened way back maybe when I was at school. They say an idle mind is a devil's workshop. In my case, it was that, and it was not healthy anymore. Then one day I went to, uh, for my interview uh, in Dublin for, with the Department of Justice. Like any other interview, it's hell. So when I came back, I was so stressed, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I just couldn't do anything. The uncertainty of not knowing whether they are going to allow me to stay in this country or they're going to deport me back to my country. It was so hard. You know, us adults can go into our rooms, lock ourselves up and be emotional the way we want to. But our children have to go to school and face other children who are living in normal communities with uh, normal families in normal um, houses. Um, I think in many ways, um, there's pros and cons about being in direct provision. Like uh, when I was in college, most times I had like, I had the support of my friends um, who were kind of family um, by the time I'd left the center. And um, there's a sort of separation anxiety and I think a slight form of depression <laughs> really um, that comes with leaving the center because those are the people that you know who have kind of guided you and supported you and been with you like through the times when every day you always, you know, telling each other you've got posts downstairs. Because for the first few years while you're waiting for that decision, that's kind of all you're waiting for, you know, that one letter that kind of decides your life in a certain way. And uh, I think in many ways I was lucky um, because uh, from like 2017 when I arrived, I was in college um, at Goy Community College where I started business management and then uh, from my results then I used those to gain uh, entrance to NUIG to study civil law and um, I, didn't, I think just that journey was easier sometimes um, when I was in the center um, because I had the support of my friends but then suddenly I moved out to Baligar, a lovely, amazing community. But it was like at the height of COVID, it was 2020 in August, September, somewhere there. <laughs> um, but it was at a time where, I mean, you could barely walk out of your own home. And so it was hard to settle into the community because I was, you know, by 
been all supposed to be at home, <laughs> indoors, protecting myself and protecting uh, my neighbors um, and every other vulnerable person, you know. So it was hard to settle in, like moving into to Valley Gar, and but. The one thing I always said to my friends was there is no way to describe that feeling where you move into your own space, your own place, and suddenly you have a kitchen. And you're kind of making the food and the meals that you want. And it's gaining that part of, you know, your, your you regain part of yourself and your autonomy. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, in the center, things like that are limited. Um, but, like, I remember explaining as well, like, the feeling of, you know, walking out of the kitchen and closing the door, you know, knowing I left my stove and, you know, all those utensils where I can make myself a meal and then walking into my bedroom. And it's just me and it's my bed and I can close the door. And uh, for a while, like, you know, I didn't have that space and that privacy. And um, I, I can just say, like, you know, moving to Baligar just uh, brought myself back to myself in, in many ways. I could find myself um, and I was comfortable. Um, I was regaining parts of myself that I had to forego. Um, it's it's very hard to be able to always express yourself when you're in the center or to feel how you're feeling and express it. I remember losing some friends and family members when I was in the center. And uh, one of the things is when you're in the center because you're so aware of the fact that so many people are kind of on that journey with you where they're waiting you know for a decision that kind of makes or breaks their life you always try to be sensitive of the next person but then that means sometimes you fail to actually express yourself or to understand yourself hi my name is mary mary delaney and I work at the post office here in Ballygar. I'm here 29 years this year. Can't actually believe it's 29 years. So, um, yeah, I can't believe it. It's really flown by. So Ballygar, it's a great little village, really. Um, I suppose the thing I like most about it is that, well, the people are very friendly. Um, we know them all personally. Um, if anyone's in trouble, there's always somebody to help them out. You know, very caring people, very nice. Um, and it's, it's like, it's part of, it's a very good community. There's lots going on for children and for adults and it's just really nice, really nice place. Well, there's a lot of empty buildings around the place and down in the square it's, it's pretty old and everywhere is empty. The square is practically empty now and there's a lot of houses there. So I'd love to see that all rejuvenated with young people living in it and that sort of thing, young families, it'd be lovely. Yeah. See lights on again in the evening, you know, businesses going on and more young people moving back and starting families here and putting them to school here and stuff like that because we have fabulous facilities here. There's, we have preschool, we have Montessori, we have national school, secondary school. We have a fantastic facility down there, Matty McDonough Centre and lots of sports and stuff going on for young people. I think it'll be, it's just a shame to see it, you know, people having to move away from work. If we had better broadband, I'd love to see better broadband and phone coverage. It's absolutely crazy bad at the moment. So, um, we have a few different minorities of people living in Ballygar now, which is lovely. Um, some of them are working locally in the shops and dailies and in Murray Timber, for example. 
example in places like that, which is great. So I'd like to see more of them working locally and getting involved maybe in the volunteering for maybe the tidy towns. They could if they wanted to. It's a nice way to meet people though. And the likes of the Carnival Committee and there's lovely places they can go for walks to the woods in Apri and Forest and maybe fishing in the ship and there's lovely things like that for people to do and you know they'd meet people along the way. I, I just think things like that are a nice way for the minorities to get to mix with people. That's been lovely. I came to Ireland in 2010 and I go to the Mercy doing my leaving cert now and um, I like the Mercy, it's a really good school, it's different in a good way and um, the education here is way better and like they help you and they're more nicer about things when they explain stuff in school but it's stressful. I don't see the point of studying sometimes because I don't even know if I'm going to go to college next year or university, but I still try my best because you never know. If I go to university, hopefully I'll be doing nursing studies and from then on, hopefully, I'll be in a hospital helping people because that's what I like to do. I like to help people. It's not too long ago I was bullied before I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been bullied before because of where I stay. And I find it really weird because the people that bullied me, their families probably lived in one too. And they looked down on me for some reason. And I just didn't like the way I was being bullied. Africa to the school, I would say, he's meeting new people, making new friends. It's very hard to do. Like mm. I got one year to adapt into this school because I like like learn the English. My English was really bad. Can I learn my English, get my stuff going, and can I make new friends. So, so it's really really hard. But by the time you make it, you know, always good. Um, just a little bit of time, man. Right? Good to go. Well, I'd say before COVID, I was supposed to go to this program in the US. Um, but then, because we were forced to do it online, I was paired with a mentor. And he had talked to me about a value list, value checklist. And uh, he just gave me a list of things uh, where he was describing his own journey. It's called the Washington Island Program. And he had gone on it like a few years before. And uh, he was just saying that, um, when making decisions, you kind of need to have like a value checklist. And uh, after having looked for accommodation in Goy and seeing, an, uh, I think, another apartment out in Updorad and this one in Baligar, um, in terms of a checklist, the most important thing was affordability because that's one thing I needed to be very aware of. Um, as a full-time student at the time, I would be very reliant on state supports. It's kind of the reality of 
me leaving the system at that time because like the right to work hadn't had been introduced but at the time I was already in full-time education so it was kind of a struggle because the time when I would have um, the opportunity to kind of I'd say save would only be summer months um, getting part-time work that's possible but then you can't really save much um, so affordability was one of the things that I had to be very aware of and as well as um, like I said like uh, for me space uh, was also at the top of my list um, and privacy and um, just after having been in the center I really wasn't in the frame of mind to share and so most places that would have been affordable for me in Galway were out of my price range. Masuge kayang sitting sa yo funum se benzi e koli Kotanga ngautoli Habangani bang chikele stratini bataba koni Bengi sitting na bochomi Masolu buti ganti benzo tingani lang habengi slalili kaa